The topic for today's uh, presentation is uh, VLSI, the need of PR. So the contents we will be going through today is introduction to the semiconductor industry, basic fundamentals of VLSI, and overview of VLSI backend design, types of software used, job roles in the industry, and who are the major recruiters. Okay, so first is the introduction to the semiconductor industry. The semiconductor industry emerged in 1960, but before that, the effects were being analyzed uh, starting from Michael Faraday. And uh, what is this semiconductor industry? This semiconductor industry is a collection of companies involved in designing and fabricating the chips. So currently, like each country has uh, almost one semiconductor industry and company either designing or fabricating the chip. So this has grown to a big extent where like governments have come up with funding the industry and uh, right now china is the largest semiconductor producer in the world and uh, when we compare all the top 10 semiconductor companies in the world intel always holds the first place which is the largest chip maker in the world so this semiconductor industry contributes to a larger economy in each country and uh, in southeast asia this is a very big market Okay, so how does this history of semiconductor uh, work? Like in 1950, we had the silicon transistor where we had the transistor radio, we, we, which, which is a very big radio. And in 1960, 1970, there was advancement and we moved to DRAMs. So uh, we had um, clocks uh, 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 and also then in 1980, 1990, we moved to DRAMs, 64-bit uh, DRAMs and one gigabit DRAMs and where we had the video games and the personal computers. So the personal computers in those days were quite bulky and the processor speed was quite slow. And it was the initial stage of personal computers in use. Since 2010, we had mobile phones, smartphones, and now we have tablets, and uh, all kinds of latest technologies with very thin devices performing lots of functions. So this is how the history of semiconductors has been so far. And I'm sure that in future, we will still see more advancements. And right now we see it in terms of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all this existing with semiconductors. Okay, since we talk about the Southeast Asian semiconductor industry, let's discuss some details about Singapore. The first semiconductor industry in Singapore was opened in 1968. And uh, as of now, Singapore has more than 60 semiconductor companies with around 35,000 employees. So this is a very big industry in Singapore and it contributes to 7% of the country's economy. So uh, being the Asia Pacific headquarters for leading semiconductor companies, Singapore is the busiest in the semiconductor market in Southeast Asia. And I'm sure that India also has major semiconductor giants have been putting up very big design houses. So Southeast Asia is like packed with semiconductor companies. now. Okay, so who are the end users of this semiconductor industry? We have four end users. One is mobile phone, automobiles, consumer products, and computers. So automobiles is like semiconductor plays a very major role in automobile industry now. Like most of the cars are automated and all the actions inside the cars are also automated. So without semiconductor, automobile industry cannot survive now. And also mobile phones everywhere. You have smartphones now and all the applications are being activated through semiconductors. And consumer products, all the almost all the home appliances these days are automated. And we, uh, we have computers, also personal computers, laptops, tablets, and... Uh, they, they are the major uh, end users of this semiconductor industry. So as we have seen some highlights about the semiconductor industry, I don't think we can imagine life without electronic devices. Because even during this COVID-19 time, these electronic devices have helped us a lot. And we have improved a lot in technology in this past six to seven months. So I'm sure that life cannot exist without electronic devices. Okay, so what are the basic fundamentals of VLSI? VLSI stands for Very Large Scale Integration. And what is this Very Large Scale Integration? 
millions of transistors are integrated into one chip and which has the facility to perform many functions in a single chip. Before the time of VLSI, the chips were not able to perform many functions at a, in a single chip. So only after the move of VLSI, now millions of transistors are integrated and a single chip are, is able to perform many functions. So this VLSI circuits are used in computers, automobiles, home appliances, digital cameras, and almost everywhere. So what are the steps in VLSI? There are two steps in VLSI. One is VLSI design and one is VLSI verification. So VLSI design includes designing circuits and implementation, which is the first basic step in VLSI. And the second step is the verification part, which is the testing and verification of the design to prove that it works and before we move it to the market. So VLSI is mainly classified into two divisions. One is the front end and other is the back end. So this portion includes designing of the circuit based on the request from the customer. So uh, the front end team clo works closely with the customer so that they get in the requirements, the design requirements from the customer and they work as a team to bring up a circuit in terms of uh, VHDL very log coding. So, and the VLSA backend team gets the output from the front end team and then they work as a team to implement the design in terms of a physical layout. So the, this electronic industry, which we stand on, has achieved a very rapid growth in the last few years with advancement of VLSA technologies. Okay, as we spoke about VLSA backend design, we will have an overview of what is VLSA backend design in the forthcoming slides. So in this image you see here, you can see that there are lots of lines in different colors. One is in green, one is in red, one is in blue. So all these are metal layers and they actually represent the circuit which was designed by the front end team. Okay, so this back end of physical design follows the front end design in the IC design cycle. So in simple words, actually it's a step which converts the circuit representation into a physical layout. So this actually mainly works digital design domain where we have logic gates, logic design as circuit representations in, in terms of AND gate, OR gate, NAND gate. So all these circuit representations are converted into a physical layout. So a transistor in circuit level is represented as a physical layout with VDD ground and all the connections in physical design. So the physical layout is represented as geometric shapes, which resembles metal layers. And these metal layer connections actually uh, represents the functioning of the circuit. So front-end design and back-end design, the output, the function of the circuit is the same. Only thing in front-end design, we have circuits, whereas in back-end design, we have physical layout. So why is back-end design so significant? Physical design gained its importance in 1990s the main reason for this significance is the reduction in distance between the source and drain in a transistor. As we all know that as the distance decreases between the source and drain in the transistor, there is a shrink in technology. So initially we were working on 180 nanometer, 90 nanometer, 16, 65, 40 nanometer. And now we are into very deep submicron technologies like seven nanometer. And so this reduction in size in distance between the source and drain actually contributes to an importance of physical design. Because when you decrease the distance between the source and drain, you have lots of uh, complications in the design. So you need physical design and uh, more emphasis is given on physical design to make sure that the end product is good. And also as you shrink the design, your wires and net in the design has to be optimized. So when you optimize this, you actually end up having lots of physical design violations. So in order to fix them, uh, nowadays the tool companies are putting more effort to make sure that uh, the design is good. So the output from physical design or the backend team is the input for the fabrication plant. So the design cycle is like, we get the requirements from the customer, the front end team works on the circuit requirements, and then the output from the front end team is given to the backend team. And from the physical design team, the output is given to the manufacturing facility to fabricate the chip. So after manufacturing, 
the chip is again given for testing and uh, all the parameters are checked and it is given to the customer. Okay, so what are the types of softwares used in this VLSA industry? The major softwares used in this VLSA industry are Cadence, Synopsys, Mentor Graphics, ANSYS. So Cadence is a faci uh, facility to design integrated circuits and also PCBs using Cadence software. And uh, Synopsys also has the facility for design and verification and also synopsis and cadence play a very big role in uh, physical design. Mentor graphics is a tool which also helps in uh, verification in the VLSA industry. And ANSYS is a tool which helps to do the power analysis in this industry. So cadence, synopsis, mentor graphics, ANSYS are the big players in terms of tools when it comes to this VLSA industry. So uh, mostly the design houses will have both Cadence and Synopsys, but uh, majority of the projects uh, these days are in uh, Cadence and uh, some companies, they stick to Synopsys for uh, physical design implementation. Okay, so what are the job roles in this VLSI industry? Basic job scope in this industry is the design engineer. So the design engineer is a front-end design engineer or a back-end design engineer, a FPGA, field programmable gate array engineer, a DFT is a design for test engineer, analog mix signal engineer, RF engineer, and IP design engineer. So in VLSI, in digital part, we have front-end design, back-end design, FPGA, DFT, and IP design. So for analog designs, the engineer is analog and for mixed signal, where it's a combination of both digital and analog, is a mixed signal engineer. And the engineer who works on RF circuits with high frequency are known as RF engineers. So majority of the companies these days, they stick to digital design. So there is a high demand for front-end, back-end physical design engineers, DFT engineers, and so on. The second job scope in the industry is verification engineer where we have front-end verification, EDA tools validation, and IP verification. Front-end verification is nothing but we have a front-end engineering team who designs the circuits based on the customer's request. So once the work is done from the front-end design team, the output is given to this verification team before it has been fed to the physical design team. So this front-end verification team will use few softwares to test whether the front-end design is correct and based on the requirements. So there is a role of um, verification engineer in terms of EDA tools validation. EDA tools are nothing but the tools we just saw is Cadence, Synopsys, Mentor Graphics, and ANSYS. So these tools, before is being used by the engineering team, has to be validated for the particular company. So this has been done by the verification engineer. And all the IPs being used in the design are also verified. So this also has been done by the verification engineer. The third job scope is application engineer. This application engineer is um, mainly specific for the EDA tools companies like Cadence, Synopsys, Mentor Graphics, and ANSYS, where uh, they are being designated as corporate application engineers and field application engineers. So corporate application engineers are uh, the engineers who will stay in-house of in these tools company and they will be liaising with the customers and uh, for signing contracts and for uh, negotiating business purposes. Whereas the field application engineers are the engineers who will be going in, in the field and they will be visiting the design houses and they will be helping the design houses in terms of installation of the softwares and also guiding the engineers in the design houses for specific designs or giving them in-house support. So that is the role of the field application engineer. So field application engineer is in high demand when it comes to all these EDA companies all around the globe, because wherever there is a semiconductor company in a design house, there must be a EDA tool support. So EDA engineers are in high demand. And the fourth job scope is the manufacturing engineer. This manufacturing engineer is mainly working in the fabricating plants to manufacture the chip. So they are known as the foundry or fab engineers, the fab manager who heads the fab and the tech support engineer who is there for the technical support 
and uh, in the clean room we have few engineers who do the manufacturing process so manufacturing engineers will be having a shift based work system because the manufacturing fabs are um, working around the clock and so manufacturing engineers also have a high demand but uh, it is not available in all the countries because only where there's a fab this manufacturing engineer has a role to play so in southeast asia europe us where there is a manufacturing fab and also in taiwan which is the tsmc manufacturing engineers have a very major role and the engineers are in high demand so in the clean room you have to wear all the required um, protective measures so that uh, because it's a very sensitive room where the chips are being manufactured so these are the four major job scopes in the vlsa industry one is the design engineer and one is the verification engineer and one is the application engineer and the manufacturing engineer okay so who are the major recruiters in this industry we have um, st microelectronics mediatek infineon tsmc qualcom nvidia texas instruments intel which is the biggest chip maker xilinx nxp micron broadcom cypress semiconductors and uh, the eda tool companies which are cadence mentor graphics and synopsis the companies here actually are the top 10 to 20 companies in this semiconductor industries but there are also lots of second level companies and also startups which uh, usually provide internships and also um, take in freshers for employment so among this companies listed here intel is the top company which is the largest chip maker in the world and uh, they have a very large hiring process and most of these companies have their headquarters in us whereas um, uh, infineon has it has its in headquarters in germany and uh, majority of the um, companies here are also listed in the stock market so um, they are, they are all like major players in this semiconductor industry whereas customers for this industry and the products they manufacture may be different whereas like for example broadcom has its uh, customers in terms of computer servers and uh, networking devices whereas st microelectronics has its uh, customers in terms of uh, very small small chips being used in the apple watches and also in uh, very minute devices like uh, mobile phones and also in printers whereas infineon has its major market in automobile industry so each company has even though the job scope will be the same but their end products is quite different and nvidia as we all know is into graphics so uh, this is a overview of the major recruiters present in this industry and all these companies have a graduate trainee program or an internship so as a vlsi fresher it, they usually have yearly openings for the vlsi internships and uh, the subsequently if there is a opening they you can be hired as a permanent employee of the organization so to get into these industries uh, we should be um, good in uh, vlsi uh, basics of vlsi and also um, there are lots of post graduate programs and also uh, short term online courses being conducted for vlsi so uh, almost all the iits in india Uh, they have a masters in vlsi post graduate programs in vlsi research in vlsi and all these will give you uh, experience on how is the market because usually the uh, vlsi studies in university versus the industry is completely different so uh, there are also lots of uh, post graduate programs in southeast asia and also in europe uh, us which will actually specialize you more into this digital design or analog design or rf or mix signal design so it will nurture you well for the industry and uh, the companies will be very happy to observe you as uh, their employees so with this i uh, end today's session of real essay the need of the r and uh, hope uh, this short overview of uh, real essay and the roles in real essay industry and the evolution of vlsa was helpful to you thank you